so what we're going to talk about today, right now we've been working on our Roman numeral analysis, right? That's our major focus. And next test will be mostly analysis. And we're going to talk about our, in our book they call them embellishing tones, non-harmonic tones, non-chord tones, okay? So in the first example, what key are we in? C. Okay. And so if you had to do a Roman numeral for the first one, it would be one. one. Okay. And then F does not fit in part of that chord, right? So we're going to call that an embellishing tone. Okay. So now scroll down a little bit until we get to. Do we specifically embellishing tone? We do. And we will. Yes. And we're, we're going to. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I'll scroll down to, uh, so, so far, remember we've said a step is just notes right next to each other, okay, and a skip, a third or more, okay. Okay, so now page two, yes, okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is the passing note, and so it's between the interval of a third, and it can be major or minor third, okay. So again, if we're in C, what would that first row do? One. Okay. Do you agree that this is a minor one 
the same thing here. And then over here we get, what is my chord here? Five. Okay, and what's the notes for it? G, B natural, D. And is that, is five normally major in a minor key? No. No, it is normal. Remember, 90, remember I said 99 times out of 100, the five chord will be major. They're going to raise. You're going to have your leading tone. What if they kept it as B flat? What would that be called? Subtonic, right? Good. Now, what happens here? Why did I say it was a 565 there? Your bass note changes, but it's still the same. And this time, though, I'm, I'm counting. I've got an additional pitch. So what would my... So I have G, B natural, D, F. Yes. And do we agree? What's the quality of that? Major. The triad's major, G, B, D, and then G to F would be minor. So it's a major minor seventh. Okay. And then we go back to one. Okay. So, so far, you're good with my analysis. Yes? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's look here, and, and I'll play this for you. Let's go ahead and look at the oboe part. So if we said this whole measure is basically C, E flat, G, the F would be what kind? A lower oh, neighbor. Good, and it would be a? A lower neighbor. Lower neighbor. And does it fit into the key? In the key, in the key signature. In the key signature. Yes. It doesn't fit into the chord, hence embellishing or non-chord tone. Okay. Now, what about the D here? What would that be? Uh, a passive tone. tone. Yeah. Okay. Now here we agree it's a G B D, and so the C would be passive tone. Okay. And then. <coughs> okay. So let me go ahead and play this for you. Um, first, I'll play just the chords. Okay. Sonata, okay, and he's going to analyze it. He wants to know 
what key he's playing in, what notes fit into the harmony. Because sometimes you want to bring out those notes that don't fit in the harmony. It makes it more interesting. So let's just listen to Yeah, let's listen to a little bit of the over. I looked at that, for this example, I looked at the whole measure. 
if the harmony changes, like, let's say we're in 4-4 four, four, and it changes on 1 and 3, what would my harmonic rhythm be? Half notes. Okay. Um, back to this example. Um, how fast is the harmony moving here? But for a while, we just have 1, 1, 1, 1, and finally when we get to 5, okay, then, now look on our second line. We're 1, and then 4, 3, 2, 5. So how fast is the harmonic rhythm there? Yeah. It's one per measure. Okay. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Scroll down to the string quartet. It's going fast. Good. Yeah, right there. Okay. So now, this is on page 91. We're looking at the string quartet. And we want you to be thinking this way. Okay. So notice that they went in here and they told us E flat minor. Okay, so what's the major key that goes with that? G flat. G flat, right? Okay. And so um, they they're helping us out here. The root is E flat. So what would the triad be? And would it be E flat? G, G flat, B flat. Because um, I was trying to be interesting. Yeah, because that would be hard. Now, I have a student. Because it can. Michael, what do you <coughs> tell us about this oh, club? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the C club. Um, basically, whatever note that the that the two C's are, those two backward C's are in between is middle C. In okay. C4. So, so, wait, what does this look like a B on the track? It kind of, to me, it's. it's whoa. Okay. And if you can move it around. Too. Right, so if you've middle got C. this, this is alto clef, and that is where middle C is. So tell us. Yeah, down a step. Okay, now Michael, tell us about. Actually, yeah, come up and write it for us. That inner clef is one of the grossest clefs that man has ever created. Wait, one of the what? Grossest. Grossest, okay. That's right. And usually when they write it, they don't just write it when you're up here because usually if you're because when you're in bass clef and you're that many when you're up here in the stratosphere, it's not worth it to write it in bass clef, so they put it like a fourth down, which it's still up there. And if you don't read tenor clef a lot, then it's gross. It's really gross. And but if you're going to be a professional bassoonist. You need to be able to. Bassoon, trombone, or cello. Cello is actually have to read in like five keys. In five notes. Plus. Plus. Yeah, they have to read bass. What do they have? Bass, tenor, alto, and treble. They have to read in there before. Now, can I give you guys a hint? When I'm having to look at an orchestral piece or a string quartet, since I don't think real quickly in alto club, I look at the other pitches and I see, can I figure out what the chord is from that? And if I'm not sure, or let's say the viola part has the seven, then I go ahead and check the viola part. But I usually do that at the end. <laughs> that's, that's my confession to you. Okay, now let's look at, well notice here too, okay, they gave us that that was a neighbor tone, and what kind? Uh, <clears throat> upper. No, wait a minute, so, which one? so here they're showing you, the, they're calling this in our book a chordal leaf. I think that's kind of overkill to me because it's part of the one chord. It's already in the harmony, but... Name is Friday Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so, the A natural, what does that end up being? A oh, little well, well, And what kind? Uh, chromatic. Chromatic, why? Because it's not in the key. Right, we've got an accidental there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Let me go ahead and play that. And while I'm playing that, I want you to look at, see if you agree with their analysis. I have a question. Yeah. Are we going to need to under, know or understand what a chord of leaf is? Um, I, truthfully, I don't think it's that important. I'm not going to stress that. Or, or 
I'm not going to make you mark that in your music. I really care because, again, that's part of, I mean, if we're saying that's a one chord and those are the notes in the one chord, I don't think we need to say anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, that's my opinion, okay? Right. So when you get to theory two and three, if your other professors want to emphasize that, then they'll tell you. Now, would we say if we went to um, an A instead of a G, would you want us to notate that by saying that it wasn't in the Or it wasn't in the um, Wasn't part of that chord. Yeah. 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 And we're going to learn. Um, so, Megan, how many, do you remember about how many non harmonic tones you learned? Or can you name some of the other ones? Mm -hmm. um, besides, like, Like, did you learn appoggiatura and suspension? I've heard of suspension. Okay. <laughs> so, as we I got to have been able to identify them that easily, okay. but I well, like how they sound. Okay. Well, as we get in further along, we'll keep adding more of the embellishing or non harmonic tones. But for right now, we're really focused on neighbor mm -hmm. and passing. Okay. So let me just play a little bit of the first violin part. And then what texture would this be, by the way? And why? Homophonic. Okay, and why? It's a melody with good image. Yes, and I put a string quartet on your last test, and I didn't get homophonic for many of those answers. Okay, here we go. Second. 
How about just B flat D F? Okay, so B flat D F. Okay, now B flat D F in my book, major. So what Roman numeral are we going to have? A big seven. A big seven, right? Oh, B flat six point one, right? I'm sorry. Hmm? We're on six point one. Six four. Six point four. So we are, we want to be on this side, okay? This side. Okay, now let's look at the third chord would be E flat, G, B flat, and in the key of C minor, major, three, okay. Then how about our next one? Yeah, A flat, C, B flat, okay. A flat, C, that's a Okay, and it would actually be major. Be major, yes, good, yes. Okay, and then our next chord we have D. And so D F A flat. Yeah, so it's a two. Two diminished, and what notes in the bass? F. So what inversion? Six four. Six three. Six three. Yes. Six. D F A flat. Right. So if we just write six, is that like an example of six three? Yes, that's fine. Yes. Six, seven, six, Unless I, you know, if I ask you to give me the full, but no, that's perfectly. So it's a two diminished six. Two diminished six. Okay. Now we're in the third. Do the little circle. Okay. And then. Now we've got, I'm in the third measure, first two beats. So C, E flat, G would be what? One and one, six, four. Okay. And then what about our last one? What about the Oh, sorry, second, penultimate, yes. So G, B, D. And it's just a triad, right? Yeah. So what would it have to have for it to be a seven? Okay. And then our last one is good. Now I want to say one. I want to say one thing here. Okay. Um, at this school, and depending on what book you look in. Okay. So notice those qualifications. If we do one six four five one. Here, they'll often just go ahead and call that 164 a 564 because they want you to be thinking that G is in the base and that it feels like dominant. Okay? You can write it both ways, and I will accept it. Okay, let me go ahead and play this for you. Okay. Are we ready? And you want to put your G minor with your colon. What about the second chord? Okay. And 
do we agree?
the other way. That's fine. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and then our last measure is. Okay. So, is the harmonic rhythm fast or slow in this? Pretty slow. Pretty slow, but you notice we've got a lot going on because of the triplets, right? Mm -hmm.
Okay, so what I want you to do, so a couple things. Read chapter four. The ones that we didn't do, you should do them for practice, right? Because the next test is going to be mostly analysis. Okay. After I look at your homework, I will email you the next homework assignment, but it will not be due, it won't be due until the Wednesday. Okay, so a week from. I, I decided not to make